Hey guys, today I want to talk to you all about a very serious subject, one that is very near and dear to my heart, personal to me, a tragedy that I myself have experienced. These clips that I'm about to share from Molly Go Lightly may be triggering to some. I also want to warn you that throughout this video, I will be using words that you don't commonly hear in live streams or in videos on YouTube because people are afraid of the monetization factor. They use words like unalived or loss of life. I will be saying suicide and possibly other words that some might find triggering. If you have been paying attention to what has been happening in the Marvon McCray case, and I hate to call it a case because it's not a case. It's not a true crime case. But anyway, if you have been paying attention to what has been happening in that, then you know that he attempted to take his own life. His wife, Dre, found him. They were able to regain a pulse, and he is currently in a coma, vegetative state. I'm not completely clear on that. I know he is not on a ventilator, according to what his wife, Dre, has told us. But other than that, he does need tons of things to keep him alive. What we're going to talk about, though, is the aspect surrounding the attempted suicide and the way that Molly Golightly is treating this survivor of a loved one who attempted suicide. I am a survivor of a suicide loss, also the survivor of a murder loss. Like Dre, I also found the individuals. I don't want to give away too much about my loved ones or things like that, but I do want to let you know that I am very aware of the feelings and thoughts that she was processing at that moment, or possibly processing at that moment, because these stages are completely different for everyone. But suicide grief is more intense than your normal grief. Let's start with Molly's stream from yesterday. Oh, poor Dre. Oh, Marissa's so, oh, Marissa's so rough. Oh, Marissa's so rough. Shut up. Shut up. He felt like the better option was to check out of life forever. He was willing to let that baby be with that little monster forever. One big thing that a lot of survivors struggle with, and yeah, I might be referring to Dre as a survivor here, even though her husband is still alive currently. You guys know what I mean. But one of the main things that they struggle with is the shame and guilt surrounding suicide. Because people like Molly Go Lightly and other individuals have this preconceived notion that others somehow should have known that something was happening or something was coming and they should have prevented it. Or they have this preconceived notion that people that commit suicide do so because of one certain instance. The unknown of why your loved one has committed suicide or attempted to commit suicide is an internal pain that I hope she never understands. I truly do, because I would not wish that on my worst enemy. It's absolutely terrible. You don't think so? You don't think so? I think so. I think it's so sad. He decided that the better option was to check out life. We don't know why Von McCray attempted suicide, but more importantly, I doubt Dre does either. And that's something that is going to eat away at her for a very long time. And she doesn't need some creator on YouTube picking apart all these little things that they know nothing about. We're not even to the disgusting part yet, and I'm already angry. You have no clue, Molly Golightly, why Vaughn attempted to take his own life. And for you to sit there and judge this woman and insinuate that she is the reason he did is the most disgusting and vile thing I have seen on YouTube in a long time. But you're gonna sit here and tell us and think that we're gonna buy it? You were so in love. You're gonna tell me that you forgive him? Like I said before, I truly hope you never go through something like this. And if you do, I really do hope that no one online does this to you.
And I thank you for being subscribed. And I thank you for giving me your time. That's all I ever wanted is was for you to subscribe and for you to listen to me. Because no one's going to give you a better version of the truth and a better version of the reality that no one else on YouTube is going to give you than me. There is no possible way for you to understand and know Dre and Vaughn's truth and reality. You just can't. You didn't live their life. You didn't deal with their issues or their traumas. I don't know your truth and I don't pretend to. This girl's living in a fantasy world over here, trying to convince these little lug, lug nuts. Oh, we were so in love. We were so in love. We're so in love. I love them so much. I highly doubt that their life and marriage was perfect. No one's is. And the videos that we see on social media are a highlights reel. It is for everyone, yourself included. So if this is your highlights reel, boy. But even if she is just trying to convince herself that she's so happy and they were so in love, so fucking what? She has suffered a huge trauma. And if that's what she needs to do to survive it, to get through, to carry on with her life, who the hell are you to tell her it's wrong? She went through two investigations. One, it's a normal investigation. It happens with every attempt. The second one was brought on by people like you for absolutely no reason. They had already done their investigation and she was cleared in both of them. Dude, if Adrian would have dipped out on me and left me, with three houses and a shit ton of fucking bills that I don't even know about, I'd be like, are you, are you, are you serious? Well, what the fuck did I do? And I'm sure Dre and other loved ones have asked themselves that question a million times. Because when you suffer this loss, the unknown, the why is so huge like a black hole in your heart that won't go away. You just have a black heart. And uh, did you have some sort of problem and you never told me about it? But if I was doing some sneaky underhanded shit and treating them like garbage, well then maybe, uh, but I'm way different than her. I don't treat my husband like a bag of shit. I don't talk to my husband like that. I don't treat him like that. I feed my husband. I talk to my husband with respect. I know what's going on in my husband's head. My I husband is my closest friend in this entire world. We tell each other every single thing. I don't pretend to know everything that's in his head though. And we can't know everything that's in our loved one's heads. We have no way of knowing if Vaughn attempted suicide because of his diet. And to insinuate that you know that that is the reason why it's gross. I would never take my husband for granted and hold him hostage. Thank you, Cork. I would never treat another human being the way she treats him. And You're currently treating her worse than you are insinuating that she treated her husband. Dre used to be someone that was completely different. At least I'm thinking, right? No, you're assuming that. You have no way of knowing what she was like, what she is currently like now. You know what she shares online, just like all we know about you is what you share online. Yeah. Someone decent and something changed in her. She can't blame anyone but herself. Molly, do you know that survivors of a suicide loss or attempt are more likely than others to commit suicide themselves? How dare you shame this woman for trying to live after this tragedy, for trying to keep her husband alive. I'm sorry, but I'm just not buying any of the bullshit. And she's, she, she's totally saving face with the laughing and the giggling. What she's trying to do is she's trying to act, if you can't see it or you don't get it yet, what she's trying to do is she's trying to act like who she was before, hoping to get in everybody's good graces. That's exactly what she's trying to do. She might be trying to act like who she was before, and I hope she is, because it takes a very long ass time to get back to that space. You have no idea how hard it is to get back to that space. So whatever coping mechanisms that Dre may need to try and heal, I applaud her for that, because it's extremely hard to do so. She took seven months 
before she returned online to make an income for her family. She didn't beg for any money. She just said, I'm coming back to make money to take care of Vaughn and my family. And this notion that she has to get back in anyone's good graces? What are you talking about? She did nothing wrong. There are no good graces to try to pry back into. If, if, you, haven't, if you haven't caught on to it. She's putting the makeup on and trying to be cute and trying to be funny and trying to be like, Oh, Amanda! Ah! Molly, I have seen you pee on a live. Twice. Maybe even three times now. Grow up. I wish I could say that that was the worst of it. However, the victim shaming continued today, and this time it included others joining in with Molly to shame Dre McRae. And make no mistake, she is a victim. Her and her children are a victim of this tragedy, not Molly Golightly and company. So here she is being all excited and fun again. So she's like, oh, I gotta get back to that. So she's trying real hard. But the thing is, is people don't wanna hear that. They wanna hear about more Vaughn, but you can't bullshit a bullshit a. Oh, I think people did want to hear it. She had way more than you in her lives. Way more, ma'am. You can't bullshit us, people. I'm what glad you want to hear is questions about move on. You can't sit there, Dre, and act like you two are in love. And that's the fascinating part of this story. Girl, he was he was trapped. You made him crazy. You drove him to the edge and he hung himself. Whatever reason that Marvon attempted suicide, only he knows. And to put that on Dre is one of the worst things I can think of. The way you are attacking her and talking about this is so disgusting. And it's only going to get worse from here on out. Mental health issues like depression and other things have such a stigma around them, especially for men, that it's extremely hard for them to reach out for help when they need it most in the world. And for you to insinuate that his wife had something to do with the reason he attempted this, it's just wrong, Molly. You have to know that. You cannot talk about how you guys were so in love. You treated him like a fucking dog. You took his wallet, you took his dignity, you took his manhood, you wouldn't give him a piece of pizza, you fucking cunt. You don't know that any of these vile things that you are spewing is fact. You're stating them as such, but you have no idea. And it is sick what you are doing right now. I don't think the cunt is Dre McRae. You are the biggest fucking cunt I've ever seen in my fucking life. You took his manhood from him. You did the worst thing that a woman could ever do to her husband. No woman ever gets away with doing that without getting knocked in the fucking face. I warned y'all it was gonna get bad and it gets even worse. But I would like to know, Molly, how you know what she took from him. If you are only talking about his diet, that appeared to be a lifestyle that they happily enjoyed together. What you're doing is sick. He had manners. He never beat on her. And now that he can't stand up for himself, now you're gonna come back eight months later and say, oh, he abused me. Bitch, he did your fucking roots. That's the closest he ever came to your fucking head. I didn't realize at one point that Molly Golightly had left her husband and son and moved in with the McCrays because it sounds like she knows every single detail of their life. So if Dre comes on here and speaks her truth and tells what happened to her and how she continues to love her husband in spite of it, it must be a lie because Molly was there and witnessed it all, right? That's what I'm taking from this. That's the closest his fist ever came to your fucking head! What, you don't like what I'm fucking saying? Give me a fucking break! Look what you did to that motherfucker! Molly Go Lightly, ladies and gentlemen. Life coach, children's advocate. Heaven help us all. You exploited him in every fucking way possible in front of the fucking world! It's not. I'd like to know what you consider what you did after his attempted suicide, because his case was not a true crime case. Do you consider what you and Justin and others did exploiting Vaughn? What a coincidence that you had thousands of people watching you live the other night. We were so in love. He was batting his eyeballs at me. Really? Oh, because he was that enamored of you? You fucking psycho cunt. Why are you even screaming? Why are you this angry? 
How many ulcers do you have from acting like this? You are going straight to fucking hell! I hope Dre never sees this video, but if she happens to, I hope she does not listen to or take to heart the psychotic ramblings of this woman. God's gonna be like, fuck this bitch. Your life's never gonna be the same. You're gonna fucking suffer. You have no idea how right you are here. Dre's life is never going to be the same. I think she's well aware of that. The chances of Vaughn pulling through from my understandings are extremely slim. So you know what happens to his children? They graduate without their father present and she has to deal with that alone. They get married without their father present. She has to deal with that alone. They have children without their father present. She has to deal with that alone. You're not there at the hospital taking care of him. She has to deal with that alone. Her life will never be the same because the man she loves attempted suicide that might eventually take his life. You ain't getting a penny from me. Not a fucking penny. If your ass was on fucking fire and there was a hose filled with it, I would hope that hose was a gasoline hose that they got at the fucking gasoline station. And I would go like this. Burn, baby, burn. Disco inferno, burn. Oh, shit. I can't believe at one time I ever thought you had a heart, Justin. Watching you laugh through this. I know your background of working at a morgue. I don't know if you ever dealt with the families who lost their loved ones to suicide, but right now, I'm praying you never came in contact with them. Dre, ain't nothing you go, oh, there goes the wig. Oh, shit. And I would do a fucking dance and say, burn, baby, burn. Hope you ain't got no play. Oh, there goes the eyelashes. Oh, shit. Don't come near me, bitch. You're this is so disgusting. Making a joke out of all of this and laughing, it's not for me to decide who needs a mental evaluation, but if it were, I'd make a strong suggestion right now. Going straight to hell. This is a little sample piece of what hell is fucking like. And you want to know something? I, the only thing I feel bad for is that those three children have to live in that house. Keep trying to hide that smile and that laugh there, Justin. The only thing you feel bad about is that three children who just lost their father get to continue to live with their mother while they try to regain some sort of normal to their lives. Finding my loved ones the way I did and the manner in which they were wasn't the hardest part of what happened to me. The hardest part was calling my husband and telling him and then joining together with him so we could tell our children about the very important people in their lives that were now gone. That part was extremely hard, but not as hard as navigating my husband and my children through the grief that hit afterwards, the indescribable grief that plagued them for a very long time still affects them to this day. You are despicable. That's how I feel, I have to be honest. And y'all heard that, that's how she feels, not everyone else. I wanna say after listening to 300 audios and me listening to all this audio, I wanted to get a picture of their life. And he had tried to commit suicide six months prior to this. She said that he had a personality change and he was abusive. And when he had seizures, he'd be a different person before and He's after. He's hungry! So here is the only person on panel who seems to possess any sort of compassion. She decides to tell her truth and how she felt about the situation. And Molly just instantly shuts her down to run the narrative that Vaughn was hungry. They both chose to live that healthy food lifestyle. Do I understand it? No. Would I live that way? No, but that was their choice. Veda, I don't know who you are, but I do applaud that you seem to want to stick to facts. You showed receipts throughout this live. I don't know if any of them are true or not because I didn't follow every ins and outs of this case, but I appreciate that about you. My suggestion to you, if you want to maintain some of that compassion you seem to have, run. He <laughs> wants some little Debbies! <laughs> Let's eat little Debbie. <laughs> what I think happened is he needed help. He, she knew he needed help, but he wanted to go on his own. Help? No, he didn't have a fucking personality change. He didn't need psychiatric drugs. He needed a fucking Big Mac. He needed some fucking nutrition. Give him. Yeah, Justin, this is about as funny as that time you showed Kylie Rodney's body. Molly, last I checked, you are not a psychiatrist. Praise Jesus. If he attempted to take his own life before and he needed to seek help, but he wanted to do it alone, what did you expect his wife to do? Because I don't think in that instance, feeding him a Big Mac is going to fucking help. He has a mental illness, a clinical issue. 
something that him and a doctor should have worked through. A trip to McDonald's wasn't going to help or fix that. A fucking salad from Starbucks and say, there you go, here's Frappuccino. You're good, bro. There you go. go. Here's a gift card. Go to fucking Subway. Here you go. That's all the guy needed. You know what? Send him to my house for a week, fat week. What do you like? What do you want? Move on. We're getting DoorDash. What do you want? Everything? We'll get everything. We'll get everything on DoorDash. I'll send you home 350 pounds. This isn't cute or funny. It's not a good look at all. There you go. Yeah. But what I don't get is like, okay, God, if, though I don't think that she caused this to happen, okay? But here's what I question though. She had a like, partner. Yes. No. And for you to insinuate that she had a part in it is vile. Vaughn suffered from a disease. Whatever mental disease that was, we may never know. And we don't know all the contributing factors to what sent him that way. Could have been a military past. Could have been past trauma with his family. We don't know. And unfortunately, we never will. I, I agree. Like, I God forbid if my partner were to do something like this, okay? It, it doesn't matter. Like, right now, as we stand, I can't think of any reason why I'm give, I would be giving my partner anything to do, any reason to do this. Like, I see nothing that, that I'm doing to contribute to this. Do you seriously think that if Dre thought she was contributing to something that would eventually cause this, she would have continued that? It's a bold statement to make without actually knowing someone and that may be the case let's say that that is the case and then god forbid something happens it doesn't matter what i thought or felt like before and like from that moment on i would be questioning myself like what did i do what could i have done differently how did where did i go wrong i would be having all this doubt she and shield to myself she, she has a conscience yeah she has expressed none not for one second has she sat there and wondered aloud uh, what, what could i have done differently like not not at all instead she I can almost guarantee you she has. Just because she chooses not to bring that to social media, the platform in which she makes her income, she chooses to keep that part of her separate from this doesn't make her any less remorseful or keep her from wondering why this happened and how she could have changed it. She's trying to throw him under the bus, saying now she's alluding to how like no he's been abusive and everything. It's like she's not taking so, accountability, Erin. Yeah. And, and on top of that, now she wants to tarnish whatever reputation, what, what reputation he has. She wants to tarnish that to save herself. What would she be trying to save herself from? She was found not guilty of being involved in anything twice. She doesn't owe any social media platform anything. The fact that she chooses to share parts of her life with her audience is her choice and her decision. She doesn't owe anyone an explanation for her thoughts and feelings. None of us do. If you or someone you know is struggling with a mental health crisis or having suicidal thoughts, please reach out to 988. You can text it or you can call it. You can also go online to 988lifeline.org. Do not be afraid or feel any shame for needing to reach out for help. It's why we have these services. I'll see you guys on the next one.